Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you a review of a new lighting system that comes from Godox. This is the Godox S30. It seems like the recent trend in a lot of these type of lights has been the modular design, and I've never seen quite so many accessories designed around a particular light, modular light, as what I've seen with the S30. That starts with a, you know, a basic um, LED type light with a frontal lens that can be focused in to either expand the beam of light or concentrate it to allow you to control the, you know, the hardness and the shape of the light. And so it starts with that premise and then it expands it by giving you a number of lens attachment options, projection options with lenses that allows you to further shape and focus that light. Um, there are a variety of other accessories, some of which we will look at today, a few others that I'll mention. But suffice it to say, you have a tremendous amount of control on how to power the light, how to shape the light that it produces and uh, you know, thus the applications that you can use the light for. Now, 30 watts at the end of the day is not a incredibly powerful light. However, when it is uh, you know, focused down uh, through you know, some of these projection type options, you can quickly get at to uh, you know, lux ratings as high as well over 9,000 um, at a, you know, about one meter distance. And so it's capable of taking a relatively you know, a moderate amount of light and shaping that into a tremendous amount of light. So today I'm going to uh, demonstrate a few of these accessories, demonstrate to you how you can shape the light, and then, uh, you know, give you an idea of maybe who this lighting system might be for. So first of all, let's talk about power here for a moment. And as you can see in front of me, I've got a wide variety of options here to um, to power this. And so starting off with the the actual power system of running it off AC power. So you've got a power brick that kind of looks like the power brick for older laptops, maybe for example, something about that size. And then you have got the actual port where you actually connect into the light in the back that almost looks like a mini XLR for um, an audio type cable. So there's a little uh, release that you have to pinch in to loosen and then you can attach in the various AC or other lighting options. So once you've attached the AC power, you have a quite a long, probably pretty close to 10 feet, three meters of cord. And so you've got a lot of play to work with that even without using an adapter. So there you've got your basic AC power, which by the way, it's only on AC power that you get the full 30 watts of power out of it. And, uh, and so obviously if you're, you know, your goal is to get as much light as possible, that's your top pick there. However, interestingly, there are a couple of other options that come with it. You also have the option of running it off battery packs. And so here you've got an option. You can actually attach it right onto the yoke here to where you can put this um, adapter for batteries and you can use the, you know, the Sony um, NPF whatever batteries, uh, series batteries. This is a 970 that I've got on here. And so you can attach that in. And then you've actually got two different lengths of cable, you know, in case you don't actually want to attach it right there. You have a longer cable if you want to mount it some other place. In this case, I've got the shorter cable, so you can just kind of run it as cleanly as possible into that. So this leads me to my one complaint about this uh, actual battery system, and that is that this battery adapter does not seem to hold the battery particularly securely. And so, you know, there is a release mechanism that you should have to use here, but as you can see, um, I don't have to use it at all. And as a byproduct of that, I have had issues when kind of just transporting the light around on a light stand where the battery's actually fallen off. And so I would have liked to see a little bit more of a you know, secure system for that. Obviously you have the option to remove this uh, battery attachment housing if you don't want to be using the battery. And so it is a nicely convenient system uh, for that. Now the third power option is actually another interesting one and that is that you have a yoke that just goes to a USB end. So you can actually even run this off of a power bank. And so, um, you know, the, the only downside of running it off of either the battery or a power bank is that your, uh, out, your output drops from 30 watts to 10 watts. And so you only get about a third of the power through that. However, of course, if you're shaping the light and focusing it down, you know, it's better to have that option than to have no option at all. You just may be in a situation where AC power is not an option for you. And so certainly it is useful for that. Now let's just take a look at the actual design of the light itself. Um, here, obviously you've got your, you've got some uh, various hot heat sinks here to allow it to dissipate heat. 
And if it's been running for a long time and, and maybe starting to heat up, there is a fan that will you know lightly run that you, can, you can't hear all that much, but you, you can hear it if you're right on top of the light and uh, it will turn itself back off when it is sufficiently cooled. And so it doesn't run all the time. So for the, the extents that I've used it for, it's actually been essentially silent um, because it isn't long enough to build up a lot of heat. So then on the side here, there is a wheel that allows you to control output anywhere from 10% up to 100%. Now, one thing that kind of threw me initially is that it said 5600K. And so I was looking for another control to, um, you know, to change the color temperature of the light. It displays the color temperature of the light there, but you can't, can't actually change it through just a switch that requires the use of additional accessories in the, in the form of gels. And so anyway, just something to be aware of for that. Now, the second thing that you have here at the back is you have a separate wheel that allows you, or dial, that allows you to control the, the amount of the light beam's focus. And I have it down at the uh, minimum distance and so it doesn't blind you. As you turn that dial, if you look down through the heat sinks at the top, you can actually see the assembly moving forwards and backwards behind the outer frontal lens there. And so um, it is either focusing or broadening the beam by using that control. So where things get really interesting here is that this light is designed to be used with a wide variety of accessories. And so um, that can be as simple as a barn door type assembly. And in this case, it's a barn door with on uh, two sides, it's got various leaves that um, allow it to store flatter for one thing, but also allow you to further shape uh, the kind of light you're wanting to use. Using these accessories is very easy. It's just a matter of dropping them in here and then there is a latch at the top that drops down into place that will hold that securely. And so then you can further shape the light in such a fashion and easily remove there. Now, of course, one of the main uh, features here is the ability to use a projection accessory here and then also some lenses. And so in this case, I only have one of those lenses. That is the uh, 85 millimeter f2.8. There is also a 60 millimeter, I believe that is an f2. And then there is 150 millimeter that is also f2. And so, you know, obviously the f-stop rating, you know, it controls the amount of a light that actually comes through. And so you have the ability to move this forwards and backwards to further focus the light down. And so it's the same kind of system where you're just taking that and you are dropping it into place and using that latch assembly to hold it down. And so then um, obviously your, your length changes, but as we'll see in a moment, your ability to shape the light is further influenced by the ability of using this lens to further focus the light. Now also intriguing is that here, in this middle housing here, you also have the option to use a couple of accessories. One of those is this really, you know, cleverly designed aperture iris. And so as you can see, it retains a really circular shape um, as you uh, kind of open and close the aperture. This uh, assembly here is as $55 um, for it. So you can actually drop this aperture iris housing uh, down into the kind of accessory slot here. And then you can use that lever to further shape the light and uh, to either focus it down or broaden the beam that you are extending out. Beyond that, into the slot, there are also other options that you can put in there. You can drop gobos in there to uh, show various lighting effects. Um, you can put scrims in there to uh, kind of have a shading effect from one side to the other. And you can get those kits relatively inexpensive. This set of, of nicely made scrims is $17, for example. Um, beyond that, you can also put uh, gels in there. There's little framing shutter, uh, like leaf blades that you can drop in there. There's a softbox accessory that can go on here. So you've got a really broad range of accessories that you can attach to this to further shape and control the light. So back to the original concept of this being very much a modular light. Now we're going to take a look at how you can actually shape the light and how much the light beam changes as you utilize these various accessories. So here's a look at how the basic light pattern changes as you move the internal assembly with just the basic light. And so as you can see, you can really focus down that light from a fairly broad spread. This is the smallest point. And then going all the way back, you can broaden and soften that light spread depending on how you move the internal assembly forwards and backwards.
Now you can further shape that light by the use of the barn door accessories. And so obviously um, when using the barn doors, you can focus down if you want kind of a squared amount of light. Um, you have the option of utilizing that and so creating a much smaller um, focused amount of light and then you can use the internal housing to further shape that light down to where you know you're just kind of changing and altering the shape and the actual spread of the light opening back up these barn doors allows you to see the difference in shaping the light between the two options now you can also utilize the iris in conjunction with the uh, barn door assemblies and so as you can see when you completely close the uh, iris here you can almost eliminate the amount of light altogether and so it can be really useful for for example opening a scene where you're bringing up the light, uh, giving you a lot of you know immediate and uh, intense control over both the focus of the light, but then also the quantity of the light that's coming through the aperture iris. So here's a look with the 85 millimeter projection unit. And so this is with everything fully retracted. You actually have two assemblies that you can actually move forward and further focus that light down. And so there is using the lens itself and then also there is a secondary housing that you can extend out and so that you can further focus down that light beam. Now, if you add into that the ability to move the afranal lens or the assembly and the light itself forward and back, you can see that you can both soften the light and reduce the amount of light that goes through there at that point. Now you also have the option of adding in the aperture iris and so that you can very smoothly uh, close down and reduce the amount of light that goes through the lens or um, you can obviously intensify it and so it does give you some uh, immediate control over how that light is going to be shaped. Now if you actually retract the lens to its uh, farthest back position obviously and then use the, uh, the iris control that obviously gives you more control with the actual size of the light spread there along with the intensity of the light. My one criticism of this even though i like the way that you can shape the light with the s30 i find that most of these accessories do not attach in an overly secure fashion and so while i really like the flexibility of what they can do it all feels like it's not really all that secure so who's this light for well obviously above all it is for those that want to use a spotlight type effect and so that could be used for either stage or film where you're looking for that kind of specific kind of lighting and uh, then beyond that those that are looking for a more focused you know harder light which could even for photography could use for stills it could uh, like still life it could be for food photography product photography things like that one thing I do find lights like this useful for is um, even if I'm shooting outdoor portraits not so much inside because it's too hard a light but in some cases I need to because I want to shoot more of an environmental type scene you can see some of these portraits I wanted to include the environment so I couldn't have light um, too close to the subject and so what I did to balance the light here light coming through the trees behind is that I focused the light from a distance and so I could uh, front fill on my subject while uh, still kind of keeping the environmental lighting of the scene to get a more balanced in end result but obviously there are specific applications for a light like this you just need to determine whether or not it's actually useful for your type of photography so at the end of the day, what's nice about modular style lights is that you can essentially buy what you need. And if there's accessories that you don't need, then you don't have to spend money on them. So if you're interested in the Godox S30, I've got linkage in the description down below so you can go and explore a little bit further, you know, and maybe go ahead and purchase one for yourself. There is a discount code there for the Per Gear store. It might help to save you a little bit of money on that if you're interested for it. They're one of the main distributing stores for Godox uh, products. Beyond that, there's also linkage there to follow me on social media, to sign up for my newsletter, to become a patron. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.